Crysa i'r digwyddiad heddiw eich tref, eich dyfodol rhan dau i otawni o Future Part 2. Dan ni yma i lansio a chyflwyno dau adroddiad sydd yn cydfynd yn fel iawn hefyd gilydd. A dan ni hefyd yma efo y matsab i Ian Williams o Lywodraeth Cymru i'r adroddiadau. Felly, dwi yma a mae'r digwyddiad yma'n cael ei gynnal ar y cyfan gyn archwilio Cymru, y corff sy'n archwilio Gwasanaethau Coeddys Cymru. A lle da ni isio nid y siŵr i'n byr i'n bydio. Y siŵr explain yn sbair yn egluro, yn sicrhau ac yn ysbrydoli bobl i fod y Gwasanaethau Coeddys y gorau fyd rhwn o fod. Dwi fy hun yn gweithio i y gynnwyd ffarf ar da ac mi da ni yma i drio hwyliso gwaith yna drwy gysylltu pobl fe'i gilydd a rhannu gwybodaeth ac arfer da. Fel, fel ni ddau gynnau, mae'n gynnau ddau adroddiad heddiw. Mae'r un adroddiad wedi cael ei wneud gyn Foundational Economy Research sydd wedi bod yn ei gwaith ymchwil ar yr economi sylfaenol ers blynyddodd, ac mae nhw wedi cael ei comisiynu a wedi cyflwyno adroddiad i Lwodaf Cymru sydd yn edrych ar ddatblygiad trefi dros yr deg ar hugain o fwnod o dwytha. Di gwybod bod ar yr un pryd, mi oedd a ni trwy dîm Nick Selwyn wedi bod yn gwneud adroddiad ar yr un math o thema, ond a gweitha gwahanol ohono fo, sydd yn clymu fewn yr ochr arall ohono fo. A mi fyddan ni'n cyflwyno ddau adroddiad yna hefyd gilydd. Wedyn, mi fyddan gynnau ni gyflwyn um, y matseb gyn Llywodraeth Cymru gyda gan Ian Williams a wedyn y sesiwn holi ag atseb i bawb sy'n rhydd. Wedyn ni gymryd rhan yn y sesiwn holi ag atseb. Mi fedrwch chi ofyn cwestiwn trwy yr chat ar ochr y sgrin neu trwy'r cyferper Q&A y cwestiwn ag atseb sydd ar wylo dych sgrin sydd ar laptop ond maen nhw'n tueddu fod mewn llyfyd gwahanol ar ddyfeisio ta gwahanol lle. A hefyd, mae gynnau ni westau arbennig fel prif ran dawr, keynote listener, sef Adrian Compton, yr archwylydd cyffredinol i hyn. Ac da ni'n fel llawn i gael yma, a gan ni fod yn fersiwn prysur. Ond i rôl o fydd gwrando ar beth sy'n cael ei ddeud a beth sy'n yn y cwestiynau, cwestiynau gataf a cyfuniadau a wedyn adrodd yn ôl ar ben mae o wedi glywad a dwi'n edrych yn a wedyn fyddan ni'n gadach chi fynd. Felly, heb oedi fawr bellach sy'n ni'n licio cyflwyno yr athro Carol Williams a'r athro Luca Calafati o Foundational Economy Research fydd yn cyflwyno i adroddiad a fwrch chi. Um, you you wait years for a report on towns to come along at the same time. Ours is the FURL report, which is on the Welsh Government website. We're essentially doing the warm-up for Nick and the Audit Commission, but much of this is overlapping, and I think a lot of what we have to say concerns um, the problem of automobility, town centres in their hinterland, which is what Luca is going to talk about at the beginning. And then, of course, I think we're going to look at the whole set of issues around, uh, around the problem of edge of town versus in town. And I'll come back at the end, after we've talked about the balance of forces between private developers who want edge of town and Welsh planners who want the town centre, I'll come back to talk about policy and practice. Westminster help is unlikely. Cardiff Bay has some policy options. Let's get on with building local agency. Now, over to you, Luca, eight and a half minutes. All right. Okay, so as anticipated by Carol, um, the first part of this um, presentation is going to be about automobility and how this has reformatted towns and cities in Wales. 
and with what consequences, some of which, as we're going to see, are surely good and have increased quality of life. Others are damaging, especially for the town center, which is a key policy objective in, in, in Wales right now and in many other places around Europe, actually. Um, so the, the first thing to say is that the mobility system, so the way we move around and the way we move also the things we need around is a very important uh, variable in the way cities work, which sometimes has been underestimated in both social science and policies, but not in this case where we really put a lot of emphasis on this um, variable. And here with the concept of automobility, what we want to underline is that we live now after the 1980s in a world where the car is the universal tool for accessing work, retail and leisure. And this is a very peculiar world, a world where 80% of Welsh households have a car access a world where if you go in an average middle, middle class or middle income suburbs, 70% of households have cars, but also that if you go in a social housing estate, like some of those we have seen in the research, actually 30% of households have no cars. So you can start to see the problems that a car-based world can create. It's also a world of hyper-mobile lifestyle, which really contrasts with the mainstream and ideas about town life, uh, places where people live and work in the same place. That's all not the case from the research. Actually, we have what we call live, work, spend disconnects in towns. That is a situation in which people live, uh, work, do the shopping, go out for drinks in very distant places where the car is a necessity, not uh, a choice. And a place defined by not like the 10 minutes or 15 minutes walk, but the 30 minutes drive to radius. Yeah. And uh, as said, this has mixed consequences. On the one hand, it's um, the car has surely enabled, uh, especially in low density areas, so not in urban areas, um, increase in uh, opportunities and possibilities to. I am afraid that Luca may have froze. Yes. Okay, right. Okay, right. This is disaster. We're going to re retrieve the situation um, from the beginning. Okay, right. Um, right. Luca was talking about the whole way in which automobility has reformatted Wales. And here's a very nice example. At M4 Junction 36, you've got a designer outlet, which is within 30 minute drive to hinterland of everything from Lacha Bridge outside Llanelli to Newport, and that's got three times the visitors and five times the non-food turnover of Bridge End Town Centre. It's an unequal competition. And Wales is partly about 30 minute drive to hinterlands. And that of course means that town centres are collateral damage. Look at Bridge End there. In the blue bit at the centre, you've got a a central area of low household income, 20 to 30,000 pounds a year, which is half that of Pendre, Lichard and Coiti, which have middle class housing estates. Bridge End Town Centre has been bypassed and elsewhere what you have is hollowing out so that, for example, in Bangor, less than 2,000 people live and work in Bangor against 6,250 who commute in by car from commuter villages. So automobility has reformatted Wales, 30 minutes drive to Wales and collateral damage. Now, if we want to look at the next stage, well, I think we have to understand the balance of forces in the built environment. Now, the key thing here is that the system is formally plan-led since the early 90s, but it's actually developer-driven. 
If we think about automobility, it requires an infrastructure of roads and buildings. How and why did we rebuild Wales? Well, the answer is the balance of forces, which is, yes, it's town planning, plan-led, but it's developer driven because the initiative is with private developers. Think about housing, 85% of Welsh new house building is private in the last 40 years and a local development plan begins with a call for developers to propose a long list of candidate sites. So the local authority chooses from what the developers choose to put forward. And the key thing there, of course, is private developers quite obviously are into doing what's profitable and they scan capital values and rents and the town center has had a problem at least since 2012 if we look at the problem rents and capital values have been declining the market value of refurbished or rebuilt property is less than the cost incurred and i think in welsh town centers we increasingly have a problem about stranded assets because of this problem that the market value of refurb what you have to put in for refurb is less than what the final property will be worth and you can see there in the slide how rents in all three town centers have been declining and this problem is getting worse meanwhile on edge of town it remains highly profitable to rebuild um, to build, to have new build off roundabout housing estates. The major house builders are on 20% return on capital employed. And then of course, there's also the problem with retail moving online. You've got large bay sheds in the, in the uh, retail parks, which are cheaply reusable for leisure, gyms, health centers, et cetera. This morning on the Today program, we had a gym CEO boasting that they had 40 gyms in retail parks planned for the next year or two. This is going to happen, and this is the next stage, which is not the building of retail parks like the designer outlet or Trostre Retail Park in Llanelli or whatever, but their reuse for leisure, gyms, shared workspace, etc. Now, against this, we've got what we call new model Welsh planning. It's got an ideal of compact mixed used settlements, which we see in future Wales, the National Plan 2040, the 15 minute city transposed to a country of small towns. And we've also got the town centre's first principle, which is all large new developments should be in towns and a degree of skirmishing about new built housing in the Vale of Glamorgan. Now, town centres first is a good first step, but not enough to redress the balance of forces. Remember, the developers want to build and reuse out of town. The town planners want things to happen in town. And the town planners are struggling with really only occasional public sector relocations, where, as in the case of the Further Education College in Bangor, the, the people who want to relocate, whether it's a health centre or an FE college or whatever in the public sector, can usually plead in town, they can't find a suitable site and it will cost more. So there's this kind of unequal struggle. And against that, we have to look at policy and practice, where I talk about the unlikely, the possible, and the creative opportunity. Our brief was to look at three small towns. Of course, that gives you a very limited evidence base, but we have worked on other things, food, afforestation, etc. And the general line is simply that if you want to get volume results in complex systems, you need coordinated purposive interventions. We've got Westminster, Cardiff Bay and the locality. Westminster unhelpful, Cardiff Bay some good policy options and lots of opportunities at the local level. Two out of three inside Wales is enough to get some movement. <clears throat> Let's start with 
unhelpful Westminster. Tory government, Treasury rule, remember we're independent researchers so we can say nasty things about the Tory government in uh, London, which will of course spend lots of money for very limited results, largely because they see private developers as the solution, not part of the problem. They're digging a deeper hole by allowing deregulated conversion of town center retail premises and this presumption pro-development on many edge of town sites, which is what Genric is actually doing. With Westminster, two things. Firstly, lobby the Treasury to do some helpful things for us which fit their worldview. The most obvious one would be renewal zones with tax concessions, like Novat on refurbishment in town centres, which suits them and us, and then start pressing Rachel Reeves and the Labour opposition to look at serious alternatives at Section 106 levies. Section 106 hasn't worked. We really need some kind of urban renewal charge through the rates and the council tax, a bit like the green charges on your electricity bill. So Westminster, unhelpful, but we can push in particular directions. The other thing we have to do in Cardiff Bay is we've got the pro town center policies. We need to reinforce them by managing edge of town development and discouraging new developments and reuse. Remember the upcoming problem about the reuse of retail and business parks for gyms, shared workspaces, health centers, etc., all with free parking on the level outside the shed. And there's also the problem in Cardiff and the Vale of off roundabout housing. Now, here we need preventive and corrective policies. We've got the planning powers to set the presumption against edge of town retail and business park change of use. We shouldn't allow shed change of use from retail unless it serves a neighborhood purpose. Then there's also the more imaginative things like per hour charges on available car spaces in edge of town retail. A pound a day in Bangor or Halford West would create a 500,000 per annum revenue fund. Now, Ian Williams's lawyers tell, tell us you can't do that under present powers. And the answer is we need to talk with the Scots who want to do car parking charges on edge of town as to how we acquire the powers and edge round regulations to make that possible. So there are things which Cardiff Bay can do, but the above all what we need is local agency. Every place is different, so we need local vision and execution. Local authorities are key enablers, and there is a capacity problem there, which Nick will talk about, but for local agency we need two catalysts. Catalysts, one, the commitment of major stakeholders with property and balance sheets. The university in Bangor, housing associations else, everywhere. Everywhere. Then catalyst to the engagement of civil society groups empowered to change local authority decisions and drive projects with a social dimension. We don't need rebuilding, we need projects with a social dimension, as with the skate park or the library or have a hub in Half Foot West. And this is really to recommend an organic foundational approach which breaks with the Welsh mechanical way. You know, the local authority engaging consultants, the master plan, the ritualistic consultation, or the Welsh government adding higher levels of development plan or looking towards institutions like the bids. Of course, we need policy. Of course, institutional institutions do matter. But the mechanical outcome of relying on policy and institutions is formal compliance and the performance of local divisions. We need local energy, we need civil society, we need alliances for change because there is so much to play for. Welsh town centres are places of sociability and long dwell times. You know, all the stuff we've got on mobile phone usage in retail parks suggests they're in and out. 
whereas people in town centers are actually stopping to talk, going to several premises. One third plus of Welsh town center visitors already come from within walking distance. But it does require a change in what we call governmentality. Stop spreading funds for new building projects, concentrate the suasion, the organizational support and the modest funding on a few places like Bangor and Wrexham where town alliances for change are close to take off. We need to concentrate on those places where with a little change we can get take off. And then we need to organize networked learning and community of practices so that many of the 22 Welsh local authorities can become fast followers. And I think initially there to, uh, to get local authorities praised for the way in which they have solved their easier to solve problems like Maesteg and Pothcall, not Bridge End. Now, this kind of agenda of lobbying Westminster, using our planning powers, exploring parking charges, activating local agency in places which are close to take off, that's an agenda which can keep us all busy. And I hope that gets us to the end within just about 20 minutes. Sorry for the mess up at the beginning with the technology. Carol, <laughs> 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 Thanks, Sean. Um, hopefully, the screen has picked up the presentation. So I'm conscious we've got a finite amount of time, so I'm going to go through this at a bit of pace and hand over to Matt, who's going to talk to a few slides as well. Um, I think Carol highlighted that we do see this work as very complementary in terms of our audit report and the report that Carol and colleagues have produced. I think for us to start in premise is to think of Wales as a, as a country really of small towns. We know drawing on information that's been developed by the Institute of Welsh Affairs, that are roughly 192 communities across the country of 2000 or more people. Um, and when you look at this mapped out geographically, it does highlight the sort of the spread of towns and where people are, are interconnected. Um, and that means that towns are often not very um, depend independent. They are interdependent for work, services, shops and leisure. But the important things are to recognize that towns are not standstill. They do change over time. And a good way of, of highlighting how these towns are interconnected is using the example that we've got on screen here, which is from Rondekin and Taff. Uh, RCT has two principal towns, Pontypridd and Aberdeer. They're about 13 miles apart, but there are also 19 other communities with 2,000 or more people. So the furthest geographical distance is 23.5 miles Hedwain to Pontypridd, um, but no journey within RCT is over one hour. So when we think of town, town centres and regeneration, it's important to bear in mind that towns are interlinked um, in Wales in an important way. Our report that uh, was published today has, I guess, three sections to it, and I'll, I'll run through these very briefly. The first one, and, and this picks up on some of the themes um, Luca and Carol have spoken about, is to, to recognise, I guess, the changing landscape of town centres. And a lot of this emanates from the post-war, Second World War period, when we had the introduction of the 1947 Town and Country Planning Act. And that really has become the basis, I guess, for the, the modern planning system we have in Wales today. And, and addressing war-torn town centres um, by local authorities and others, it became quite clear early on in this process that retail redevelopment was an important way of generating income through non-domestic wages, but also creating wealth within town areas by encouraging shoppers to, to visit towns. I think one important thing we would stress, however, is, is that retail is really about absorbing disposable incomes, things that are already in place, rather than creating new wealth. But that led to a significant increase in, in retail centres, in town centres, um, probably from about 1950s through until the 1990s. And over that period, there have been some important changes taking place. 
and, and Carol spoke about the, the edge of town, out of town retail development. And this is a, a map that shows the changes taking place within Merthyr. So number one is the historic heart of the town, um, the 1900s, where you had the, the traditional town centre. Um, then with sort of the use of the new planning powers, that's been extended to, to regenerate Tidville Square and Beacon Place in the 1990s, 2000s, slightly moving the town centre south. But then in more recent years, the growth in out-of-town retail, and I guess this is a real recognition of growing car ownership. Um, some concerns about base in retail, primarily in, in the traditional town centres, and Carol spoke about some of the challenges there, um, developer preferences, uh, and then also the, the issue around non-domestic rates and, and the loss of anchor institutions. Um, non-domestic rates, these are really important contributions to the Welsh Government budget, and we know that around a billion pounds is raised annually, um, but we do know that retailers really struggle at present. Um, with the cost of rents and so forth, and particularly in the current climate, have been able to achieve zero rent deals in many areas. And we know that physical retail compared to e the e-commerce sector um, are penalised in terms of the cost they pay. So there is an issue to be addressed nationally on, on um, non-domestic rates. In terms of anchor institutions, town centres are places people visit when they've got uh, a range of services available to them. But we also know that in recent years, there's been a reduction in banks, building societies, post offices, ATMs and so forth. So town centres are being hollowed out as, as these services move on online. And with online growth, we, we know that in the last 10 years, that's been quite rapid, almost doubling in, in terms of the numbers using. But in the last 18 months, with the impact of the pandemic, the, the switch to online working, online services, shopping online has been transformational. So there, there are many challenges facing town centres um, and some of that emanates from past decisions, but you, know, you can't foresee the future necessarily. In terms of the present, I guess we have three key messages. Um, firstly, Welsh Government has prioritised town centre investment and have spent significant sums of money in recent years, directly and indirectly enabled and factored in to help support authorities deal with town centres. Um, the funding streams have been really useful in allowing councils and their partners to regenerate primarily physical buildings and improve the condition of, of key areas. Um, the different grant conditions, however, are often seen as being quite onerous to comply with and, and, and use. And the money itself is heavily phys, uh, focused on physical regeneration. I'll come back to that point because it's quite an important one. Um, so as well as the money to improve areas, you know, the, the, the pandemic also brought into sharp focus the challenges of, of councils uh, and, and businesses to, to manage through this period. And from our work, it became quite apparent that businesses have really welcomed the financial support from Welsh Government during lockdown periods and see the support as essential in them to recover. Businesses have also that themselves found different ways of working and diversified their offer to ensure that they're able to, to thrive and survive, moving online, um, using home delivery and takeaway, pop-up services and mobile services, and in some cases, converting empty premises. But, but the one big issue, I guess, that really struck us when we were undertaking our work is that there has still been a significant number of shop closures and retail job losses in the last 18 months. And currently, one in seven high street shops are empty in Wales. Um, 6,900 stores have closed and around 135,000 people have lost their job. The latter two figures are, are UK wide. Carol spoke about the planning system of being plan led and the importance of local authorities leading on that agenda. Um, I think what strikes us is that to be successful, authorities really need to have clear ambitions for how they want to approach town centre regeneration. That means they must have people with the right skills, attitude, and drive, and be prepared to make quite difficult choices, politicians and officers. Um, Carol did speak very clearly about, you know, the importance of involving local communities and businesses in these decisions and driving that agenda forward. And it's certainly something that we feel authorities need to, to focus on. Um, and they must use the tools that are available to them to deliver regeneration. Uh, our report sets out some good examples of how that's happening in some parts of the country, but there are opportunities in, in other places. But the one thing that really sort of holds back a lot of the regeneration work at this point is the lack of revenue funding. Looking forward then to the future, um, I've been asked, do, do, I, do I think town centres have the, the opportunity to change uh, and become prosperous places again? And I think for me, the, the fact that Welsh Government has prioritised town centre regeneration in the reconstruction from COVID-19 is a really important statement of intent at the highest level. So it's really good that the town centre first policy has been put in place. Um, and that's, that's coming through, I guess, very strongly in the messaging that's being given by Welsh Government. There are some plans in place to del deliver a number of actions that will help support um, improvement in that way. But to make that a real living actual policy that's going to deliver on the ground requires lots of things to happen and strong involvement from everyone. And for us, we think there are four key things that 
would benefit town regeneration going forward. And we've called these the four eyes, intention, involvement, informed and, and intervention. And what do we mean by those? Well, in terms of intention, I think there needs to be a clear purpose for town centres and ultimately local authorities and their partners need to be very um, honest about the leaderships required to really start addressing some of these challenges. We've seen some good examples in other places within the UK and within Wales. Stockton on Tees springs to mind where the authorities taking a very strong line on the things that he, that they feel needs to happen and making some very brave and bold decisions. But they're basing that on, on our second eye, which is involvement. We need to prioritize and lead on working and involving communities and businesses. And this is an area where we've seen some really good examples in the country. Love Triochi, Bid, uh, the place plan being developed by Newtown. These are things that are really helping to move forward that involvement agenda and allowing town centers to be regenerated with the support of local people. Information is a key area from our research. And I know that Carol mentioned access to data as being essential to understand how towns are used and how that's changing. Um, and we've seen some good examples locally about how local authorities sought to do that in Carmarthenshire. But we feel data is an area that we really need to see picked up and driven forward. Then the final one is intervention. We feel that authorities need to use the tools that are available to them to intervene in making some changes and, and making a difference on the ground. And we know there are some really good examples, particularly in England and Scotland, Altrinham and Dumfries, where that's happened. In terms of our report, uh, the Auditor General's made a number of recommendations. I won't run through the detail, but they, they sort of echo some of the themes Carol's picked on. Creating a more level playing field by really reviewing some of the policy areas around non-domestic rates, transportation and car usage. Um, funding, we feel that the, the money that is there is not going to be sufficient to regenerate um, all physical aspects, but it could be used in a slightly different way to help stimulate um, and encourage bodies on the ground to, to act differently and work differently. And that's really there to build capacity, expertise within councils and their partners. We think the town centre first policy is a good thing. It really is uh, progressive and can really help. But Welsh Government needs to do a little bit more work in terms of defining that and placing it at the heart of their decision making. And then finally, we produced a self-evaluation tool to help local authorities and partners on the ground um, take this agenda forward. So I'll stop sharing there and hand over to Matt now. Thanks, Nick. Just uh, just bear with me while I set uh, some slides up. Can you all see that? Can uh, can someone let me know? Yeah, that's clear. Great. Just want to talk about our um, interactive data tool. So this is going out to um, to complement our report. Um, we, we produce these alongside reports and it's just part of Audit Wales way of um, just encourage, encouraging people to access data better, just to visualize the data and make it more accessible to people. Um, this is the front page. Um, it's basically building on data from Understanding Welsh Places, uh, which has been designed by um, Institute of Welsh Affairs, Wizard and others. So this tool's got more of a focus on um, local authority level data and all Wales um, as opposed to town by town level. So um, basically we focused a lot on the interdependency of towns, which Nick uh, mentioned. Um, so actually we've, we've kind of focused on interdependency across all of Wales. Um, and also the tool just enables uh, councils and partners just to understand the dynamics um, between towns and how they interact with each other. So that's kind of been the focus of it. It's also designed to support better decision making and evaluation. So it's just um, it's it's a way of encouraging local authorities as well to just make better use of data. It's also quite publicly accessible as well, um, and it just allows decision makers just to make best use of resources. So I'd encourage you all to um, to take a look at it. Um, it's just got a dashboard, which is just an interactive overview um, at a council level, but also all Wales level. Um, so there's lots of demographic data, funding, interrelationship data, um, all on one screen there. Um, this just shows we, we've included a few maps just showing interdependency. So you can just get a flavour of, um, of just the types of towns across Wales, where they're clustered. And this uses the, um, the understanding Welsh places categorisation of interdependencies. Um, and it's basically um, complementing our, our key finding that Wales is a country of small in interdependent towns um, that all, all kind of rely on each other for employment um, across neighbouring towns. So 
just kind of underlines the point that towns can't be can't be looked at in isolation. We've got a screen on funding there, um, focusing mainly on the Welsh Government transforming towns spend. Um, we've put a few different measures on there, just spend per population. Um, by local authority level, but also by the usual residential population of towns as well. So it's just a few different ways of looking at it. Just provide some food for thought on, um, on where councils are in relation to each other. Included a screen on what's in our towns. So this just shows how towns are being used really, using some ONS data and um, just a bit of accessibility data as well. We've also just included um, an example of, of where GPs are located um, across Wales in relation to town centres. This was an area we found lots of, of gaps in the data, so something that could potentially be built upon. But it's just kind of given a flavour of where our public institutions are in relation to town centres and whether, you know, whether individual local authorities are comfortable with that. We also provided just um, some sample uh, responses from our public and business survey we did um, last year. Um, so this is just provided at an all Wales level. Um, it just gives a flavour of the public ambitions and businesses ambitions. Um, so it obviously helps helpful to decision makers just to um, obviously involvement being a key aspect of, of any regeneration activity. And it includes uh, information on future priorities as well. And then we've got all the sources which can be um, accessed from those, those buttons at the end. So it's all there um, just to kind of show what the underlying data is based on. Just alongside the data tool, Nick also mentioned we've got a self-evaluation tool as well. Um, this is just kind of one of our recommendations is for local authorities to use this, um, this series of checklists um, just to see if they are um, where they can improve, where they're where they're doing well, and actually that's part of our, our statutory recommendations to uh, to encourage local authorities to use the tool as well. Um, I'll put this link uh, in the chat, and I'm sure we can share the slides as well. But um, it's just where you can access the tool and all our other data tools as well. And as always, we're we're always keen to receive any comments or feedback. So um, so please let us know what you think. And thank you. Yeah, thank you, Matt and Nick. Um, you may notice that I'm speaking English. Um, that's because Sky Broadband have a problem in Cardiff and our translator Neris has dropped off the line. No worries, we carry on. So, thank you for that. It was very interesting. And I hope everyone can get a lot of useful information out of the data tool as well. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Ian Williams from the Welsh Government, who was a keynote listener in the Part 1 event in May, but now has become the representative of the Welsh Government. And does it Yeah, hello, I'm Sean, uh, I, um, I've heard from a few friends down in Cardiff that the uh, sky has gone down all over the place. So uh, just as well, I've moved it to God's own country up here in North Wales. Uh, and... Uh, escape that and I'll promptly crash now I guess but uh, um, look two reports as Carol says arriving at the same time but beautifully dovetailed, dovetailed I think and uh, and symbiotic in uh, both their recommendations and the way they've worked together um, I think this is a an example of how we can work better together when we're bringing um, these kind of thoughts uh, about the way we want to change our sites this is I'll come back to this theme this is about choices um, we've chosen to uh, uh, to have a, 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 a almost Americanize our uh, uh, the way our, our, our we live um, with out of town um, uh, uh, shopping, out of town leisure, and uh, this in a sense is about and people like it. To be honest, um, this is a sense uh, about whether we want to choose to 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 do it differently. Now, I want to say that we welcome these reports and we accept unequivocally all the recommendations. But it isn't just about Welsh Government saying that. It has to be about all levels of government. And, uh, and, and I, I include town and community councils as well, absolutely, and town and community activists as well in part of that, because this can't just work with Welsh Government um, uh, saluting the flag and hoping that things will get better. It can only get better if we all 
work together to, to do that. I mean, it, uh, as, as I said, it took 50 years for us to break the town centres. It won't fix it overnight. This is a good place to start. Um, obviously, as the regeneration nerd in the room, I'm passionate about uh, town centre uh, 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 yeah, transformation. But uh, uh, I understand that the real politic of change is that it's all very well for me and my officials to be, uh, uh, um, to be uh, uh, passionate about it. It's actually about politicians and political support that is, is really important. And we're lucky here in the, uh, that Lee Waters, the deputy minister uh, who has responsibility for regeneration, is passionate about this agenda and, and, uh, and likes the sound of uh, Carol's report and the, uh, and the uh, uh, WAO report and wants to support this and wants to do something about it and doesn't want to be in a position like Nick Selwyn says very often, he says, you know, we don't want to be here in three years coming back and nothing's happened. Uh, and so uh, it's not just Lee Waters' support, but also, as I said earlier, the support of all um, uh, um, uh, different levels of government. And so I'm really glad that we've got so many councillors from local government on the, on the, on the line today. Um, now, the minister has a ministerial town centre action group, which, if I'm honest, has been good, but it hasn't been enough about action. So he's tasked me with uh, taking the recommendations of both these reports and... Um, and try and group them and create and resource up two or three um, short task and finish. He does not want us to be um, uh, analyzing the hell out of this for another two years. He wants stuff to be done. So um, to analyze and work out what has to happen and report back to him in the, in the town center action group. Uh, I'd be very grateful if, uh, uh, if Wales Audit Office would be willing to attend um, uh, the, uh, the uh, the action group when we report back as well, because uh, I, th I think that that will help given the uh, given the amount of uh, of work you've done on this uh, subject. So the three, uh, I I don't know whether uh, Sean has managed to stick up my um, my presentation. I I, I I I fear technology, so I've I've just done one slide, and uh, they say that a a, uh, um, a busy slide is a sign of a frightened mind. So I don't know what that says about me, but it's a very busy slide that I've got up there. Uh, hopefully, Sean is. Um, is now showing it to you. If not, then uh, then then you'll have to listen to me and look at my ugly face on to talk to you. But uh, um, so you'll, you'll see you see the bottom. Let, let, I think the three work work streams that are, that we want to create around the, the recommendations. They 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 kind of grew, there's a spectrum of how easy they are to do. So I'll start with the easiest one in a sense, which is the uh, the red box at the bottom, which I've called "Physician, Heal Thyself." Now. You know, I had a shock at the first event, I'll be honest, uh, many of you were there. Um, I had a shock that so many people didn't know about all, our, all the various uh, uh, programs, grants, loans that were available. And, and, it, and I guess reflecting on it, why, why was I shocked? You know, like I said, I'm a regen nerd. I would expect to know about what BFF, TRI, TCL, um, H2E, H2H, all those different programs. But why, why on earth would you know those things? Um, you know, you've got better things to do in your life. So um, absolutely, we're going to accept the uh, recommendation about simplifying, making, making the grants and the loans easier to understand, focused all around transforming towns rather than all these myriad of portfolio of, of stuff that we've got out there and making them easier for community groups to understand as well and maybe access. Um, uh, consider that the hard cast a cast iron guarantee that we're going to do something about this and soon. So uh, uh, watch this space on that. But that, in a way, is easy because we can control it. I'll move to the green zone, what I what call the green zone. I mean, I called it planning and engagement. I mean, again, this is, this is about us choosing what we want as, uh, uh, as, as our town centres and the society around it and the way we live in terms of leisure, learning, living and working. I, I have to... Um, just uh, re-emphasize what Carol was saying. Um, those out-of-town shopping centers are going to change. They won't be about retail anymore. In the same way as town centers are, 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 tra are transforming in front of our very own eyes in terms of the retail offer. Uh, those out-of-town shopping centers are going to turn into to leisure, cent le leisure centrals. And uh, well, we have to decide if that's what we want, uh, because if that happens, then the, 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 the nexus of activity uh, moves inexorably towards out of town again. And we've chosen to do that again. Um, so I think this, this work stream, uh, I mean, you know, I, I've tried to call it different things and talk about different things as you can see in my slide, but 
It's really about facilitating and supporting communities, the communities themselves to structure and reimagine their towns. And so you, know, you start with a plan, don't you? Um, and, and, you know, so many places have tar- plans and they're just, some of them are awful. Uh, you know, they're just the same old generic stuff that we, we, we constantly see with a picture of a happy, smiling nuclear family, some trees and uh, maybe a dog and uh, everyone talks about them being world class and everything. Well, it, plans have to be unique to the locals. They don't have to be particularly smart or glossy, but they have to be unique and they have to, they have to speak to the local community, you know, uh, emphasising the geographic, the social, the economic, the, the historical or cultural strengths that that area on that town actually has. Um, I mean, it has to mean something to you rather than be the generic town plan that we, we, we see so often. It has to be inspiring. Um, and, and that can only happen if we, if we harness the genius, the power and the magic of local communities. So um, we are... Uh, uh, we, we, we need this group to decide whether, quite frankly, if someone doesn't have a plan, do they get any investment? And we might have to be as brutal as that. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm a civil servant, so I'm not going to be that brave just yet, but I think that could be where this, this work stream goes to. Um, you know, and it has to work with local authority planners to, to tighten up the area in which retail works in towns. It has to be smaller and larger spaces outside that for town centre living. You know, we, ha- we have to increase the density of uh, town centre living if we're going to work through these new 20-minute neighbourhoods where people are able to walk into town uh, easily rather than living uh, near a roundabout uh, up by uh, a, 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 large, a large road. Because, you know, we've made that choice. I look at where the Welsh Government um, offices are. The main ones and the new ones, uh, the, the, the Merthyr one, it's, it's a town, isn't it? It's right there, it's the A470, it's handy for parking. The Parking. Uh, the the Clendon Junction one, it's out of town. It's next to the A, A, A55 and it's easy for parking. Those are choices we made. Um, I don't think we'd make them today, but we are still making choices uh, in today around um, primary care and uh, FE and all those other things where we have the complete choice and we're still choosing to do things out of town. Um, uh, Town Centre First is a good start, as Nick says, as Carol said, but it, 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 it isn't anywhere near enough. Um, it, it, when the Scots are so muscular in this. In this. They're, they're a bit, even too, maybe too hardcore, even for my blood, but they are Town Centre only. They're pretty much prohibiting anything out of town. I mean, they're not prohibiting abattoirs out of town, but, 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 but they are prohibiting pretty much anything, including, if I'm honest, out of town housing developments. And if you look at, I mean, even I was just looking recently at the North Wales Economic Ambition Board, which is an excellent body, but their um, large site um, uh, uh, housing development sites are all out of town next to the A55. Is that what we want? Um, I know it's easier to build on flat green field spaces rather than in town um, uh, 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 brownfield. But is that what we want? Um, I think this group can sort of uh, d- develop those thoughts. Um, in, in, in all these cases, for these three work stream groups, I, what I want is, you know, it's obviously official led because it has to have that kind of support. But we need external challenge. We need the Belbin plants, as you call them, to uh, to create that challenge. And otherwise, we just get into the same group think and we'll end up with the same answers we've always had, won't we? Um, I've said earlier on, uh, I, I need to create a network. It's we will still work through the local authorities because they, they have the resources and the uh, skills and the capacity to be able to, uh, to, 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 to lead on, on uh, regeneration of town centres. However, as I said earlier on, the genius, the power and the magic, in my experience, comes from the grassroots. And um, I'm not absolutely sure yet, although we, we will do, who, you know, who we call when we want to speak to Bella, where the, where the, the, the ideas are. In, 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 in individual little towns. We are completely agnostic. We don't care if it's a bid, we don't care if it's a town centre partnership, we don't care if it's a town council, but there needs to be somebody everywhere that, that feels this ownership and has the anger, the passion to, uh, uh, to want to, um, to, to get something done for their own, to, uh, their own towns. We're gonna to work with a good practice exchange. Our good friend, Sean there is on, is on the line now. Uh, to try and create this network. And that, and that I think, would be part of this work stream. Uh, finally, muscular enforcement. Uh, I think this is a, a, a really good recommendation and uh, something that we've been working on for a while, but need to, to step it up now. What we've found is there is an element of bypassing officials. 
We've insisted on every local authority cabinet getting uh, the training on enforcement. You don't have to go straight to CPOs. You can do other things. A whole host of, uh, of activities that you can do um, that will, uh, will, will help enforcement. And so you don't have those big, ugly buildings stinking up your high streets uh, constantly. Um, you don't have to have them. There's, there's a ton of things you can do. We've got an excellent course and a big fund waiting to be utilized that will de-risk this for local authorities. I fully understand your local authority officer, you could lose your job over losing a quarter of a million pounds trying to go through to a CPO. I get it. Um, so we as big government will indemnify you in a sense. If you take the chance, as long as you know you talked it through with us and when we think there's a good chance of it, of it being successful, we'll back you up. You know, we'll take the risk, not you. Um, and uh, uh, I, I think I think that's an area which I, I want this work stream to, uh, to, to, to hard up. The final area is the blue bit. Of, uh, I, I've called it financial incentives, disincentives. Both Carol and Nick major on this because every single stakeholder group we've ever discussed with um, always does. Um, and what, what, what both WAO and Carol are suggesting is in effect turning the world on its head um uh, in a very radical way and 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 you know what I, personally i think you're right but is this this is let's not kid ourselves that this is easy um you're basically saying that we need to be lowering the costs of activity in town centers but that comes with a, an equivalent increase of costs of doing things in out of town it 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 rebalances the the equation um it's almost certainly right, but it's almost certainly very difficult. Um, there's all sorts of things where we do have powers and things we don't, a lot of consultation that has to happen, but is it the right thing to do? And should we approach this work stream with a why not attitude? Why aren't we doing it? I think we should, um, but I, I think we will need a lot of help from outside groups to, to help keep the, the burning platform on that. Um, Cause it's, it's not gonna be easy, uh, even though it is important. Anyway, look, I, I, I'd say the red section, easy, the green section, a lot of action and a lot of passion, the blue section, a little bit more difficult, it's a lot more difficult, but probably where a lot of the action should be if we're, if we're serious about the choices that we have to make, it is about choices in the end. You know, um, it, it's, gonna, I, I, it's not quite as stark as living like Americans or living like um, uh, Shishi Europeans in, uh, in, um, uh, in Bologna or whatever, but it, it is, it is, um, uh, uh, it is a choice. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop yapping there because I know there's plenty of Q&A to happen. And um, so thank you very much. And thank you for the reports. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, that generally, folks, um, it's, it, they're both very good pieces of work that we agree with. Really. Yeah, very on Ian. Thank you, Ian. Um, as it happens. Neris is back on the line, so if if don't miss the the day, Sharad Kamraig, it's not a good idea, but Pablo and Ashley, so set to set Pablo a panel and I'm not because they're not asked. Um, Dio, yeah, very on yet. Um, give them yet, TV on. Ah, and did. Well, you have and if that's a kid in this school, more blind on the Duma by an alouette, e e bob, get with you, ag e um, commit action there. Right, a cover, but some remember if you can't understand me, the interpretation is on the, the there's a little globe on the bottom of the zoom screen, um, where the, the interpretation lies. Actually, my Ian, what you got on Katani? I even did the good at all. So, um, actually, I'm going to play with a couple of notes all earner. So, um, they're pretty Ian. Ah, well, then you're one in some of the line. I ran question about sub or so sure. My can any well panel mixed in Matt Prashat. Carol Williams, uh, Julie Froud, uh, Joel Erdner, or Claudette Kermit and Maluka, Califati, Dallar, Elaine Hivit. Uh, West of the Nakemtian, we're going to need to come to um, Prevrandaur and Granto. 
So, McEnany, hold on, let me just call the. Idechra? Or on question, I mean, I've had a question in a reif, my dear Kali Kavlina. So, Chris, I think Kavlina and Gamraik, and Augusta, this is next to shot. Question again, Keith Evans. And I. I represent a small traditional market town in Llandysil, Ceredigion. Many of the issues and points raised by Carol will be important for us to take on board. The presentation to me concentrated on what I would deem to be very large towns. Can you talk a bit about what can be done to support the smaller market towns that have lost their banks and many public services? Carol Julia. Look at it, eh? Right. Um, Julie, um, we, we've gained another panelist, <laughs> Julie Froud, co author of the report. Morning, everyone. Yes, I, th I think that um, the, the three towns we looked at in our report ranged a lot in size. So, Bridge End is obviously a lot larger, but, but, but Bangor and Haverford West are, are, are smaller towns. And I think we're conscious that towns are different and start in different places. But I think many of the points that we were trying to make about the dependence on automobility will be true to, 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 to a smaller size of town as well as the, the, the Bangor and Haverford West side. So I, I think that a lot of the points we were making um, are, are relevant to smaller towns. It may be easier in a smaller town to, um, you know, to engage in a, in a sustained way with local communities. I think that's probably easier than in a big town. So I think smaller towns have some advantages of more connection, more opportunities, more coherence than bigger places. So I would say that, you know, there are some advantages in starting in smaller places. Certainly when we were doing the report, we were looking at um, some of the towns in Wales that were generally considered to have more successfully managed the regeneration process. And most of those did seem to be smaller towns where groups of traders had taken a you know and other and other you know um parts of the community had taken a real leading role in shaping things and and, and you know organizing things so i think you know lots of advantages in being a smaller place okay let's say new and i think i've run out of question anna So, yeah, um, question to Matt and Nick, come at all. Um, where is Gwynedd in your chat to show how much you spent on town regeneration? Um, Matt? Sorry, Sean, can you say that again, please? Um, the question I got was from Godfrey Northam um, asking about. Where you could find Gwynedd's information in the data, so where is it in your chat to show how much you spent on town regeneration? Uh, Gwynedd, yeah, it should be in there on the town uh, dashboard. Um, you'll see a selection uh, panel on the left-hand side. Um, so if you select, and it's the same for all authorities, if you select um, the council, it will provide um, a list of towns in that area. You'll be able to see that as an overview on the map. And what the data is telling you is, is basically the combined data for those towns in that local authority. So it's just emphasizing on the local authority. And um, I hope that's that's clear. There's also a how to use the tool, which will just explain um, screen by screen how it works. So at um, the question question from Del Morgan. How should we deal with towns of different size and close proximity? Also, we have many towns in close proximity that are in different counties. This will prove challenging for any approach based on individual authorities. Yes, indeed. And, and the one thing about all of our towns, it's really interesting, is that they've all got distinct characteristics. And I think Ian talked about that. How do we combine the most unique parts of our towns and what's their unique selling point? And how do we make them work complementing to each other? So um, in terms of how we're doing it, we're working with all our towns across Wales, we're working with them on master planning and place making plans, and all of which are trying to get an approach that will see a long term investment plan for that town, but also making the most of their unique characteristics. What we want to see is that 
towns that are in close proximity to each other, whether they're in different counties or not, are actually working together. And they're not in competition, but in fact are supporting each other. So um, the work we're doing is trying to do that. We're very fortunate in, in Welsh Government, we have more of a national view, although we work on a regional basis and we do work closely together to try and make that happen. Yeah. Sorry, when you are at the kit about Nick, our question. Uh, thanks, Sean. Yes. Uh, in our report, we do recognize, um, and I think uh, Matt spoke about this, that the towns are interconnected. So you've got to think about the geography of an area and the locality. So you shouldn't see towns um, necessarily as standalone because they are very closely interconnected in terms of work, employment access to services, leisure, that sort of thing. Um, and we do acknowledge that being able to regenerate towns will require some regional based solutions. And our report talks about, you know, the positive opportunities presented by the joint collaborative committees are now being set up that allow local authorities in a region to come together to talk about economic development planning, transportation planning, those big strategic choices. So I think, yes, um, as Joe and, and Ian have said, this is a bottom-up approach which is going to be successful, but the mechanisms and tools that are the disposable of local authorities to work regionally is really important in this area as well. Yeah, Nick. Um, so I'm going to ask you to develop our question, Emma. Our... Um, Okay, so I'm going to submit them line. E question, guess she threw a post, gain Mike Cutty or Ben Arth. And the question is Is there a role for bids in providing substantial support to town centres? Could the present legislation or regulations be amended to make them more effective at Dunama? Possibly Jaws or I got hurt or not. Apologies, I couldn't unmute then. But yes, I think there is a role for bids and there is a role for uh, all groups in town centres. So town councils, community councils and bids. And, and really it's whoever's best placed in that town centre to implement the actions for them. So we don't have bids in every town in Wales. We have them in a number of towns though and they are very effective in the spaces. So, uh, so the answer is yes, I think the bids have got a huge role to play. And in fact, bids are members of our, of our regional and national groups. So they have a, a voice there with us. Um, in terms of legislation, I think we do have, um, Ian's talked about setting up groups to look at legislation and look at different changes. And I think that that will be the forum in which we could start raising such questions. But I think that, you know, that although we think, you know, we, bids, are, bids are fantastic, we're also recognised that there are other groups out there as well who also form a, a very similar role within our town centre. Yeah, sure. Um, so I know now that you should have our bids uh, group here topic. Okay, so I need some advice on the question. Is that, um, hon gyn, gyn er toft o sy'r benfro. What are the opportunities for housing to be a key consideration in options for town centre regeneration and to address some of the significant affordable housing pressure that we're facing? Should this opportunity receive a higher focus? Llawi fyny ffwys i siwr fynd. Carol? Sy'n siwr fynd am ywt sydd? Absolutely. I mean, if we look at the regen that is taking place in Welsh towns at present, what's not happening is intensive, high-density, mixed-income housing, which provides a kind of model for the future different from the off-roundabout estate. That's absolutely what we have to move towards. The problem, of course, is the problem that I raised in the presentation, this business of cost versus market value, that edge of town housing development is highly profitable for the big house builders, but in town development has this problem of you put the money in and the property is worth less at the end of it than you've spent on the refurb or the rebuild or whatever. Part of the answer of that is to get towards larger scale developments because the cost versus value problem is acute on or near Woodfield Street in Morriston. But if you could redevelop a slab 
and produce a new kind of residential district, then I think that would make a big difference. We have to attract people back to living in town centers and deal with the problem that the middle classes have exited for off roundabout estates and commuter villages. Yes, I think from our, 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 our looking at the data shows that, that, you know, disproportionately the people in town centres are people who live close by. And, you know, they're the people who make towns sociable. And with the nature and climate emergency, clearly, you know, there's even more imperative to have people living in places where they can walk and use um, and, and cycle. Yeah. So, in the Unarathi show, Kavranir question in a recovery of the opportunities for housing. Yeah. Yeah, just to say that um, Ian in his slide mentioned town centres as being places of living, learning, leisure, and work. And at the moment, we do have lots of people who live in our town centres, but we do need to do more about that. And, and also, I think in Nick's report, he um, he pulled out some really interesting statistics about what town centres are used for and, and how we could maybe think about um, more leisure use in our towns, more living in our towns, more opportunities for people. So, and we have got a number of projects um, where we are looking at living in town centres. And of course, we're always conscious about the very challenging social housing targets that we, we have currently and how we can get more opportunities for more housing across Wales more generally. Yeah. Right. Ma... Okay, can you question again? Chris Jones and said, not to be over dependent on public sector funding, but how do we move to a more agile and responsive way of funding and stimulating activity, e.g., revenue? Sorry, Win. I think um, I think you're right, is that we have to be agile in the way we fund things. And recently we have been making strides in this. Over the COVID crisis, we've seen very rapid deployment of funds for town centres to help them uh, adapt to COVID. And also, as a result of that, we've developed our small grants programme, which is actually incredibly agile and in that it allows you to invest in a number of different things in your town centres. So not just concentrating on shops or homes above them, but also looking at digital interventions, green spaces um, and, and various other sort of areas of investment, which, which are much more agile and much more rapidly used. And I think we, we should be looking to make our grants flexible and to be deployed in the right way. But of course, I mean, as it's been picked up in the report, it's not just about capital investment and also about revenue investment. And that's what we have to look more closely as well. Yeah, sure. That as before, we have to change the balance of advantage and disadvantage between edge of town and town centre, particularly by making edge of town development and reuse more difficult for private developers. And also, I think, thinking very seriously about the health boards, the universities, the further education colleges and the housing associations, all of whom have balance sheets and borrowing powers and are source really of an intermediate kind of finance between Welsh government and the private developer. I think in the future, a lot of the initiative, particularly on housing, could come from housing associations if we mobilise beyond the half dozen or so who have high commitment to social value and are on board for this agenda and get more of the 35 plus housing associations in Wales engaged. Yeah, Carol. Right, so we're going to question. So, did the event for chat run? Um, I spin all even the doom quite and cover point of the old winner on the question today. A Swansea councillor once said that people would pack on the shop counter if they could. Do problems of revitalising town centres need a massive behaviour change to break the one stop convenience of a big shop at a supermarket and not struggling to ha carry heavy bags? Um, and how does the impact of internet shopping and home deliveries change the offer of small independent town centre businesses as well? Luca, 
maybe Luca would like behavior change, Luca. Do we need large scale behavior change? Well, I think in a way the answer is yes, but um, I think I, I saw that question before in the chat room and I think it's <laughs> the point that people would park in the shop if they could, it's totally true. In, and that was exactly why what we wanted to emphasize uh, <laughs> with the sole automobility issue that, you know, we, we build cities and I would really also like the point when you said that in the other report when Wales is a, is a place of interconnected towns <laughs> that's really crucial uh, because <laughs> towns are connected and people move around these towns by car and the places which are functional for the car are in a structural advantage and unless you start thinking about changing this slowly through more in town living better public transport different kind of connection that's really the the only way you're going to build a town where it's convenient again to shop on foot or by active travel if that doesn't happen um people will continue a, a massive behavioral change is going to be very unlikely so there is a design it's really a design problem of how you design towns and their connection that would be my argument. I'm going to ask you a question. question. I'm going to ask you a 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 question. I'm Yes, well, I, I suppose it depends on the place. I'm sure in lots of places, people probably feel that they've been consulted to death and they want things to happen. But I think in other places that, that that's not the case. And I think this comes back to the, the, the point that the, the towns are very different and we need to kind of start where places are. And in some towns where there's been a lot of consultation and people are very clear about what they feel they need and how to do it, you know, it's an implementation question. But in other towns, we know that there hasn't been enough discussion and, and engagement with, with, with a wide group of people. And, um, you know, that is necessary first to kind of build up the momentum and the, and the you know, and, and, and the bank of ideas and the buy-in from people of different kinds. So again, it's there's not a sort of there's, there's no, I think there's a message that's come through in you know in 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 in, in lots of different ways that there's not a single approach to take that we're going to have to deal with different places in different ways. But I think the consultation fatigue very often comes from ritualistic processes of consultation which haven't really changed things or engaged people. I mentioned very briefly, um, you know, Halford West whose consultation is a model, because in Hufford West, from the beginning, when people, when the council has consulted, in some cases, things change afterwards in a significant way. The most interesting example was one of the first things they did was a skate park. Um, the councillors initially wanted it, I think, where it wouldn't trouble visitors to the town, and the community wanted it somewhere else. The community got their way and I think that's good consultation which changes outcomes and motivates people to do more consultation. Nick? In our report we talk about involvement rather than consultation and engagement and, and that's deliberate because we think involvement is the key issue here. It's about enabling people to shape the responses that are needed, not just being consulted on options that you think may work from your perspective as a local authority or housing association. And it plays really well to the Wellbeing of Future Generations agenda where decisions should be driven by those who receive the services and have the greatest impact. Yeah, Nick. Right, do all the question one guy. Um question Kevin South um gain. Keith Thomas, see, and Gavin, let the key in world er atepion. Where do you see the the solutions coming from, um, for the problems that you've highlighted with, with your reports and presentations, and how how will the task and finish groups 
be established because even though Keith says himself in the question that he is a consultant, he is interested in being in taking part and helping as well. So, Joe. So in the first instance, we've got a ministerial town centre action group, which is which is full of people, both external and internal to Welsh government, who will be tasking us with setting up these small, very targeted groups. And we will, of course, look for people from different sectors to join them. And I think we'll also take advice from that group as to who should be there. So they'll be set up via that mechanism. And I think that in terms of, of where you know the idea should come from generation, I think bottom up is the way forward. It's um it's it's listening to communities and what they want. And it's the involvement, as Nick says, it's not about um, you know, giving people three options, which one do you dislike the least? It's about building things together and understanding what our community needs and then understanding what, what will help it regenerate. So I think that the reports have told us very strongly that it is the communities that will drive this, which I think is an excellent suggestion. I also like the fact reports had different levels as well of, of things that we have within our control to change. So making things simpler is within our gift to change within Welsh Government. I'm glad to say other things will require us to lobby maybe central government. And, and then we have the, the very strong theme, which I think took up most of Ian's slides actually, which is around community engagement, working with local authorities, working with our partners in bids, town councils to, to really you know, instigate change within our town centres. Yeah, well, I, I would say that the message of our report and the idea that you need coordinated action at different levels to empower localities is where does the initiative come from? All of us working together in different ways. In the middle of the slides that uh, that um, that we presented. Um, there is the one awful intellectual phrase about governmentality. And um, there's also the Welsh word diwigiad, reform, revival. There needs to be a different spirit. And I think what's so encouraging, I think, about our report and Nick's report and the reception by Joe and Ian is there does seem to be a different spirit. And I think if we can work together in new and different ways, then the problems of the town centres are not resolvable overnight, but we can make steady progress. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sean. Yeah, I've been lurking in the shadows, uh, uh, as ever. Um, um, it, it is a daunting uh, task, I can tell you, to, to try to um, uh, draw together strands from, from such uh, an event of this. So much uh, fantastic uh, information and expertise shared with us this morning. So I will have a stab um, uh, at a few themes that um, have struck me. But before I uh, attempt to do that, I just want to say a thank you, just in case I forget at the very end, uh, a thank you to everybody who has uh, um, uh, put this event on and made it such a, a success this morning to Carol, Luca uh, and Julie, uh, Ian and Joe, uh, Neris for your expert interpretation despite your uh, connectivity uh, challenges uh, and to our own team, uh, Sean. Uh, Nick uh, and Matt at Woody Wales. Uh, and thank you all for your engagement and, and participation in the Q&A as well. Um, I guess the, the first thing I, I mentioned has been drawn out by several of our speakers uh, is a fairly obvious one, but it's about the coherence of, of the messages in our report from Audit Wales and, and from uh, Carol and Judy. Uh, Julie, that um, is great to see. It tells me that from our perspective, we're on the right track. Uh, 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 
it's very rare for us in Wales to have the wherewithal, it seems, to bring things like this together at the same time uh, and thereby amplify their uh, impact. So I'm delighted to have seen that, delighted too to have he heard such a positive uh, response from Ian on behalf uh, of Welsh Government. Uh, coherence uh, is a theme uh, that has struck me through throughout uh, the event today. Um, fantastic to hear such a positive reception from Welsh Government, as I said. Um, but I, I think it was Carol who, who mentioned that uh, well-meaning, uh, well uh, uh, um, put together central policy from Welsh Government is never alone, uh, enough uh, on its own. And this is an issue that we see repeatedly through our work uh, at Audit Wales. The Welsh Government and the whole of the public sector in Wales is a big beast. Uh, uh, and success in any area relies upon the coherence of policy objectives and incentives throughout the system. Um, uh, so uh, that's something that we see repeatedly in our work, and it's an issue that we will be pressing Welsh Government and others on uh, consistently, uh, so that uh, uh, the well-meaning intentions from uh, one part of Welsh Government are not contradicted um, uh, by uh, conflicting objectives or incentives from other uh, parts of the machine. I'm struck too by the... Uh, uh, Pretty obvious message that no one size fits all. You know, we, we cannot give a, a, a simple blueprint. This is the way to regenerate town centres uh, across Wales. It's about uh, finding solutions that fit uh, locally. And this is where this issue of uh, what Nick described as involvement rather than consultation is so key, I think. Um, uh, the questioner who uh, alluded to consultation fatigue, I absolutely recognise that, but there is a difference between consultation and meaningful, purposeful uh, um, uh, involvement. And as Nick said, that's one of the uh, principles that's enshrined by the uh, Future Generations Act in Wales, which is an act which Pretty much all of the crucial parts of, of uh, public sector in Wales are required to, to act within. Uh, and we see it repeatedly, that need for genuine uh, engagement and involvement with communities rather than tokenistic, uh, ritualistic uh, consultation. So absolutely crucial if we're to find the solutions that we need. Um, there is a commonality uh, in uh, the recommendations that we make from uh, Audit Wales uh, for this piece of work to many others that we make. Um, and we've touched on some of those this morning uh, as well. The theme of simplification, I was delighted to hear uh, what Joe uh, and Ian had to say on that front. Uh, simplification of funding regimes, simplification of grant uh, opportunities and so on, because that is a, a, a frequent uh, plea that I hear from other parts of the public service. So great to hear that. But we make repeatedly uh, similar calls in respect of the importance of having capacity in the system uh, to take on the challenges that we face, the importance of using data intelligently uh, to shape our responses, uh, and the importance of leadership and ambition. Uh, uh, and in this area, that's probably the, the single most striking call that we make from, from our report. Uh, uh, none of this will um, be successful without uh, strong, ambitious, bold leadership that is willing to take some of the tough decisions that we know are there. A uh, couple of points to finish on. Uh, going back to Welsh Government, as I said, I'm delighted to see such a, a positive response. Uh, uh, but a message to Joe and to Ian, uh, if you would like us to take part in your uh, um, uh, action groups in some way, we'd be delighted to assist on that. We see it as part of our job to keep on your case, I'm afraid, um, because uh, 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 well-meaning uh, public servants from within the Welsh Government often say the right things, uh, but then we find ourselves um, uh, going around the loop uh, and, and things not really changing. So it was great to hear uh, in Ian's presentation the message of pace and the Minister's commitment to pace and action in this area. So we will look to hold you to that, as I'm sure others who are on this call uh, will do as well. And finally, if I can, I'd like to finish on a note uh, of optimism. Uh, this is a, 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 
a daunting agenda uh, as uh, I think Ian said, we've taken 50 years to uh, mess up our town centres. Uh, prior to the meeting, he, he didn't say mess up, he used probably more colourful language, but I won't uh, um, uh, inflict that on you all. 50 years to mess up our town centres, we're not going to solve uh, those problems uh, overnight. It is a daunting agenda and we're trying to take it on at a time of immense pressure for the whole of public service uh, and society more generally. But surely there can be cause uh, for optimism. You know, we've heard that there are pieces of the machinery in Wales that are all pulling in the, in the right direction from Welsh Government down through uh, the public, public service. Uh, we've given you, uh, and Carol's work has given us uh, a clear blueprint for the way forward uh, from our perspective. Uh, and I have seen over the last 18 months uh, um, a quite stunning performance from the Welsh public sector as we've had to address the massive challenge uh, of the pandemic. Um, we are well equipped, in my view, in Wales. There are advantages to being a small country that has capacity, that has expertise, that has levers uh, at its disposal, and that has an established culture of collaboration and partnership working. When we put our minds to it, when we are all genuinely committed uh, to a shared goal uh, and purpose, we can do remarkable things. Uh, we've tried to include in our report a few examples of success stories uh, of regeneration uh, and good practice that we've seen elsewhere, so it can be done. Uh, and as Carol said, uh, if uh, he is correct in um, uh, discerning that different uh, spirit uh, that exists uh, at this point in time to tackle this agenda, uh, there surely is some cause for optimism for us all. So, Jochen van Jan, thank you all very much indeed for all your participation and engagement uh, today. Thank you. Thank you all. Cymitran, a mi fyddan ni yn rhannu y sleidiau a'r recordiad maes o law, ond a, yn ogystal fyddan ni'n gyrru'r cwestiwn ar ond pawb hefyd i, weld, byd, uh, i gael y mataf gynnyn nhw i achos mi oedd gynnyn ni lot mwy o gwestiwnau na gynnyn gynnyn ni amser i'w gofyn mae gen iawn. Gair hynny, diolch eto i bawb yn cymitran ac yn ddod a dyna glai.